I have regarding it. Okay, everybody knows we are recording. Don't say bad words. It'll be <laughs> in the history books if you do. So this is, I mean, I've been doing mortgages actually 31 years this month, um, which is so crazy to me that I've been doing it this long. 2-1 buy downs have been around forever and they've kind of changed over time. But right now, what's really amazing about a 2-1 buy down is the opportunity it, we have because appraisals are up here, right? Sellers are realizing they can't sell their hat price up here. So we're seeing price reductions but we've still got some value, right? That we can do some things with it that would benefit your clients. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, Tyson, go ahead and go to the next screen. All right, so what is a temporary buy down? Very, very simple. You are buying the interest debt rate down 2% the first year, and you are buying down the interest rate 1% the second year. And so um, it's, it's, that's where the word temporary comes in at, right? And so if you're at five and a half percent, you're gonna be at three and a half the first year, and you're gonna be at four and a half the second year. Once you get to the third year, you now are at the, um, at the note rate of five and a half percent. And part of what makes this so cool is that not just me, but people that are a lot smarter than me and have been uh, involved in the industry for a lot of years, a lot of economists are saying that we're going to see rates dip back down. If I were to guess, I'd say to the, to the lower fours. I don't know that we'll three, see threes again without some major world event, but it could happen. But within 12 to 24 months, so you guys have probably heard the phrase going around that's called, that says, marry the house and date the rate right? Get it locked into your house now because we are going to continue to see appreciation, even though we're kind of in a little bit of a, a little bit of a downturn right now, but over time, we're going to continue to see appreciation. And then the rate is not permanent. If you're, if you have the ability to refinance in one to two years, you don't want to spend a lot of money up front to get that rate. So this temporary thing is what's so uh, beneficial. So we're gonna give you some more details on that. All right, so first of all, the funds cannot come from the buyer, which is interesting because when I used to do two one buy downs in the past, they could, but that's also because the buyer could qualify at that first year interest rate, but we no longer have that option. So that's something to remember, the buyer cannot pay for the buy down but here's who it can come from so the seller could also be the builder uh, and here's an interesting thing i think there's a lot of builders right now out there panicking i have a client right now that was uh, under contract going to be done in a month on a house in that wander development in saratoga springs and they just backed out gave up their earnest money and they're buying something smaller because the thought of going into that house with that house payment they couldn't handle it. But here's the thing, they qualified. They qualified to do it, but they said, we're not comfortable with it. Now, this was a little while ago, and I actually wish I had had, had put all the thought I've put into this two and buy down, because what I would have presented to them, I would have said, hey, let's talk about a two and buy down. Here's what it would cost. Here's your first year payment, your second year payment. And by the third year, I think we're going to be refinancing. Why don't you present to your seller the option, I'm sorry, your builder, the option of them paying for that buy down. They can still say no. You can still back out of the transaction, but at least you came up with an option that might be a win-win for everybody. So if you guys have clients in new construction situations where they were at three and a half when they qualified, and now we're you know in the mid fives to upper fives, this might be a conversation. I don't know how desperate builders are yet, but I don't think it hurts to have conversations on that. So seller and builder, listing agent, buyer's agent, and lender. So here's the thing. Uh, Carla, I hope you don't mind if I share our scenario. So Carla reached out to me last Friday uh, about noon, and she had a, a contract that the financing and appraisal deadline was five o'clock, and the buyer had said, I'm backing out. Um, because of financing. Um, and so they, their lender said, this is what it costs for the, for the buy down. Um, and so Carla kind of called me to kind of explain that. And so really, I think it was around $10,000. Now you can split that between these four parties. 
So me as a lender, if I've gone to all of that work to get the, to this point, I would absolutely be willing to kick in some money. And it depends on the loan amount and a lot of circumstances, how much, but I absolutely would kick in some money. And I would hope that the seller and the listing agent and the buyer's agent, I would hope everybody would say, you know, I can do a little bit. Let's all work together to, to make this happen so that the deal, especially the seller, because now they have a house that probably they're going to sell for less anyways. Um, and so that's who the funds can come from. And it can be spread out between those four parties. So if you have any questions, put it in the chat because I know that can be just a little bit confusing on that. Tyson, anything you want to add there? Uh, no, I think you oh. had all the main points. And, and the key one is that it can be split. You know, not one party has to foot the entire bill. Yep. It can be divided up, which is oh. pretty cool. Awesome. Okay. All right, so what are the benefits? This is the best part. So obviously lower initial payments. Again, they have to qualify at that note rate, but sometimes that just feels too, too tight for them, right? They were planning on being able to do some landscaping or some furniture or, or something like that. Um, you know, it's a lot of money over two years that they, they, they can put towards something else, even if it's simply a comfort level. I think buying a house is not always a blessing. And I think an emergency fund is really important. And a lot of times when people close on their house, we're taking all the money they have in the bank to make it happen. So by doing a two one buy down, they're able to have an extra, you know, two to $400 to put maybe in a savings account every month as an emergency fund for that house. So I think that's super cool. No out of cost um, for the borrower whatsoever. And then this is the best part. And I just learned this. Don't know where I was before, but let's say that in 12 months, they uh, rates drop down to four, four and a quarter percent, and it's worthwhile for them to do refinance. Well, they've still got 12 months worth of that um, buy down sitting in an account that's all refunded to them. So any amount that's not used because they either sell the house, refinance, or I don't know, win the lottery and pay it off, all of that money is returned to them. So that's a super big benefit in my mind to the borrower, especially where we think that there might be an opportunity to refinance before that two-year mark. So I love that one. All right, benefit for the sellers and listing agents. So incentivize your borrower without dropping the sales price. I think that's critical in this market because like, you know, like I said, we've, we've, we've gone straight up like this and now we're kind of going like this before we level out again, right? A little dip in, in prices and, and, uh, and in the market. And so this kind of helps level that out a little bit. And then differentiate your listing. So uh, I don't know exactly how it works with you guys as far as putting um, notes on your listings in the MLS, but you could put seller to pay two one buy down. The hard thing is you can't say exactly what it's going to cost because it's not based on the sales price. It's based on the loan amount. And we don't know exactly what your buyer's loan amount will be, but we can give a guess and we can put a guess of an estimate in there and we can always help you run those numbers. It looks like I've got two things here in chat. Um, I, oh, it was a question I addressed. It. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, I'll let you watch that, Tyson. And then better bang from your buck than a permanent buy down. And Tyson, did you have a little, uh, that little table that showed the permanent buy down? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. We're going to, I just couldn't, yesterday, that was yesterday we talked about it. 24 hours means I lost some of my brain cells. So we're going to show you why it's better than a permanent buy down. All right. So who qualifies for a 2 1 buy down? Um, first of all, you do have to have a minimum 680 credit score. So even though you can still do a loan with a lower credit score, you can't do this program. And then of course the borrower has to qualify at that higher rate. And then um, owner occupied purchases only. So can't do this on second homes or investment properties. And then fixed rates. We're not doing a lot of arms right now because they're really expensive. They are lower rates, but it's costing like three points to get them. So they're super expensive. And then Government loans, VA, FHA, and USDA, you are eligible. There's just a few little quirks to it, um, but we can guide your clients through that no problem at all. All right, here's our example. Okay, so sales price, 550. Let's say the buyer is putting 10% down, loan amount 495, their interest rate's five and a half percent. 
I think today we're about 5.625, but we, we've been hovering in that range, right? So the first year, their principal and interest payment would be due 22.23, which is $587 lower than the five and a half. So they're saving 7,044 over that first 12 months. Then the second year, we're buying the interest rate down 1%, so 4.5%. They'll st they're still saving 302 a month and a total cost of 3624. So the total cost to the whoever chooses to pay for it, the listing agent, buyer's agent, lender, builder, seller, is $10,668. Now, how many of you have seen on Facebook and on your listing and on your triggers, how many of you have seen more than a $10,000 deposit, sorry, not deposit, rate decrease in the last month? I'm seeing it constantly, constantly. And so, and you may want to do, a, uh, you could even do a combination. Hey, price reduced 10,000, seller willing to pay 2-1 buy down, right? Um, so any questions on those numbers so far? Because I know that can be a little bit confusing, but I love Tyson's graph and how we put that together. So basically you're adding together the savings and that's your cost the difference between the rate. There, there's no other costs to do this. There's not like a setup fee or an additional underwriting fee or an escrow hold fee or anything like that, okay? And uh, one thing that, so when we mentioned on a previous slide that the, the borrower gets refunded if they um, refinance before the two years. So if they were to refund right after, or sorry, refinance right after the first year, they would get that $3,624 refunded back to them. That makes sense. So that's pretty cool. So if rates were to just take a dive in the next year and they decided it's a good time to refi, they also get that kickback. Absolutely. Oh, hey, so since we're kind of partway through and we're going to go fast, I want to do a giveaway of dinner and some movie tickets. So everybody that puts a comment in there, at the end, we'll look at all the comments and we'll do a random drawing and send you some Zoom prizes. So just put, you know, just say hi. You can do whatever you want in the comments and then we'll um, announce a winner. So, all right, Tyson, next one. Um, well, hang on, Christine oh. asked a question. She just said, how soon could they refinance? Or is there oh, I love that question, Christine. So as lenders, we have what's called EPOs, early payoff penalties, right? And so they have to make at least seven payments before they can refinance and that doesn't have anything to do with this temporary buy down. It has to do with the fact that every lender has a large penalty if a borrower pays off before about, I say seven payments, sometimes it's a little less. I say that to be conservative because I won't know the exact date till after closing. And so we try to really make sure our borrowers understand, even if rates drop down in two months, we still need you to wait because otherwise I have an eight to $20,000 penalty that comes out of my pocket. So yeah, good question. Yeah, and like Bliss said, that's true on every loan, not just this program. Yep. Cool. Okay. All right. So permanent buy down. This is why the temporary buy down is so much more beneficial. And I'm going to go back to that phrase: marry the house and date the rate. Very, very few people that are getting a loan right now will keep that interest rate for very long. A permanent buy down buys down your interest rate for 30 years. So basically, if you want to get down to 4.99% on this, it's going to cost you $10,642, which is only saving you $156 a month. Now, over 30 years, that's phenomenal, right? It's a very smart thing to do if you could predict that you're going to have this mortgage for that long. 99% of people will not, maybe even higher percentages than that, okay? And so $156 dollars savings for 12 to 36 months, not so much of a good deal. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody why the, the temporary is better than the permanent buy down. And yeah, in the what? end, as far as lenders go to us, it doesn't matter which way they go. It doesn't affect our loan. We, it's just a little bit different paperwork. It doesn't affect our income. It doesn't affect anything. I just really like people to go into things and know all their options and do the options that's best for them short-term and long-term. So I talk through this with them. Yeah, and how I did this example, just in case it wasn't clear, the, the buy-downs are about the same. They're almost, they're within 
like $20 yeah. of each other. And on the permanent, it's half a percent. You're only buying it down half a percent. So just like Bliss said, you know, if you can predict that this is going to be super long term, but all the indicators, we think it's much better to use that money to buy down a full 2% for a year and then 1% and then see where things land after that. Cool. Yep. All right. Okay. I think that was it as far as slides go. Hey, any questions? Tyson, I'll let you review that to see if you have any questions. Remember, go ahead and put comments in there to win the prize. Um, if you have a scenario that you want us to run the numbers on. Now, if it's your buyer, it's really easy to do that because we're going to know how much they're putting down. We're going to know their scenario. If it's your listing, we're going to kind of guess. We don't know if they're putting 5, 10, 20% down, right? And that makes a big difference on the numbers. And so we can give you kind of, here it is, if someone puts 5%, 10%, 15% down. And so just so your seller is of, is aware of what they could do. And, and, as, and as a listing um, or buyer's agent, I don't feel like you need to, this is my opinion, I don't feel like you need to walk in with offering to pay any of that. When I gave that situation earlier with Carla, to me that is, that's really looking at it, okay, we're trying to save a deal, we're not trying to make a deal. You know, at the point we are right now, I think you're better off selling your seller, hey, this is what's happened in the market, this is why it's really difficult, here's one idea for you to consider. Um, and then the idea of everybody sharing in the cost is really is we're trying to keep a deal from falling apart at the last minute kind of a thing. So hopefully that makes sense. And you know what, Bliss? I mean, and my sellers were happy to pay for that because to save the deal, they were worth, it was worth for them to, you know, pay the $10,000 buy down program. So we actually told the buyers, hey, sellers will pay for it. Nice. But for some reason, the buyers just decided I think they really wanted to back out of the deal yeah. for another reason, but I think um, a lot of buyers have cold feet. Yeah. That's why I think if upfront it's part of the listing and we can show them what it does to the numbers, I think it just creates a lot more, um, what's the word, a lot more investment of, yes, I want this. I'm getting a great deal. This makes sense to me, you know? And so, yeah, I appreciate that, Carla. Any other thoughts, anybody? Uh, we have a few questions. Okay. Um, so Amanda asked, are the EPOs the same for every lender? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's usually 180 days from when the loan is purchased by the investor, which is why I say seven payments because that can take a while. Some lenders, like in, uh, some or, uh, originators have to pay that themselves when it happens, depending on how it works with their company. But I get a little bit better rates that I offer my clients. If my company paid for it, they would, they would give everybody... The companies that don't charge their loan officers when it happens, they cover it by having a little bit higher rates and they just factor it in so much percentage a year that it's gonna happen. Okay, uh, Amanda also asked, or said she's seeing advertising for one zero buy downs. Is that the same concept and is that? Yeah, you're just doing it for 1%. Mm -hmm. But security home, we're only doing two ones. Yeah, so in a case like that, we're just we're only doing two ones, just with um, th with our agreement with our investors. But here's what I would do in that case: just offer to pay. Let's say it's a five hundred thousand dollars sales price. Whatever that one percent would be, they could just pay that much of their closing costs, and the borrower keeps that much money in the bank. That's just kind of another way to do it. So, good question, Amanda. Okay, Martin asked, is a 10% down payment needed or will 3.5% on an FHA? Work? So um, yeah, we can do FHA 3.5%. And so yeah, pretty much all the loan programs allow it. Okay, Leif asked, how is it structured? How do we write this up? So uh, for a listing, um, for a listing, we're gonna kind of have to guess how much someone might be putting down. And then Tyson or I can work up those numbers for you. And then and for then, the actual contract. If you're, if you're under contract or your buyer is making an offer and wants to know what this would be to put it into the contract, we can give you more specific numbers for sure. Okay, then Christine asked, does the two one buy down cost more if the buyer puts down less, less money? No. So it's it's based on the loan amount. So the mm -hmm. so it does oh, it, cost it more. does. I thought you meant um, loan to value ratios. Yeah, it, it, the two one buy down is based on the principal and interest of the loan amount. So yes, if they have a larger down payment, your cost for the two one buy down will be less. I, I answered that incorrectly to begin with. 
Okay, and then Gina asked if we'll send out a recording. Yeah, yeah. we will do that. Who doesn't want this in perpetuity? Mm -hmm. If I said that right, right? Y'all are gonna save this every year on July 20th. You're gonna bring it out for the memories. Yeah, <laughs> this, you know what? We're gonna have bells and whistles with whatever the market by, might be. I remember three months ago, I was advising my clients, you know, to talk to their agent and offer to pay the seller's closing costs, right? I mean, it's just a bell and whistle that fits this market right now. Um, and it's a good one. It's a good one. So cool. Any other questions? Uh, and then it says, does every lender offer this? So if I offer it on my I list, think so. lenders I think some lenders aren't as familiar with it, but it's again, what goes around comes around. Most people are becoming familiar with it. And so every lender has the ability to do it, depending on how familiar they are with it. Just send them our way. I know, right? <laughs> are there other lenders, Tyson? <laughs> hey, okay, I cool. think that's it. All right, guys, we did keep it short and sweet. And I so appreciate you guys being here. I know you were all busy and working on work. Um, feel free to reach out to Tyson and I with any questions we can help with, even if it's not related to the 2-1 buy down, we would absolutely love to work with your buyers and with you. So thanks guys, appreciate it.